Elegant in design. Precise in function. Built with one purpose. To end lives. The machinery of execution stole from and inspired many of the world's greatest inventions. It mechanized torment and terror. Coming up, the engineering behind the modern machines of malice. Western world entered the modern era. Enlightened minds sought to create execution machines with humanity. Engineers invented devices to end life quickly while exploiting the principles of gravity, torque, velocity, and electricity. The word capital in capital punishment actually comes from the Latin word caput, meaning head. This refers to crimes of the most serious nature, punishable by beheading. Dying by axe, there was always the chance that the executioner wasn't going to be strong enough, that it was going to take more than one blow. During the French Revolution, beheading gets mechanized with a device capable of lopping off a head every 10 seconds. They call this machine the guillotine. The original goal was to come up with a method of execution that was quick and painless for the victim as possible. The guillotine is a giant mechanized knife designed to remove heads. With the release of a rope, gravity pulls on the blade and sends it down through a channel. The blade severs the neck upon impact and the head falls a short distance into the wicker basket below. But the inventors of the guillotine needed to overcome an inherent problem with cutting. If a blade is flat, it creates a messy chop, not a clean cut. An angled blade is one of the best ways to slice things. If you think about somebody trying to cut a piece of meat, you're gonna angle your blade and you're gonna push it through. That's much more efficient than taking a flat blade and putting it on your meat and then trying to cut it. The angled blade of the guillotine revolutionized the beheading business. It weighs 15 pounds and with repeated filing becomes razor sharp. But an angled cut is not enough to remove a head. The power behind the cut comes from 70 pounds of dead weight called a mouton, stacked on top of the blade. The reason why it has to be so heavy on the top is to create enough energy to cleanly sever the head. If you don't have enough energy coming down, you might leave the person only cut halfway through. The guillotine blade travels up and down between two upright posts, 14 feet high. Executioners hoist 85 pounds to the top of the posts with a rope and pulley system. They lock the blade into position with a spring-loaded clasp. But it's hard work severing a head. The neck is, is, is a very strong structure. It's designed to hold the head so the head can rotate and, and so forth. And the bone structure, the vertebral column, is very, very strong. So it, it takes a lot of energy to sever the head from the body. This is why traditional beheadings are rarely precise. Unskilled executioners and dull blades leave victims severely wounded, but far from dead. It sometimes takes several blows to the neck to completely remove the head. The axe and the, and the sword not only could be difficult to remove the head, but you could also get crushing injuries as well as cutting injuries and make it a very painful death. In 1792, the guillotine becomes the official French method of execution. So during the French Revolution, you know, this was an extremely quick and efficient way of executing people. This machine was a picture of efficiency. You could have one person placed in the device, the blade fell, within the next minute there would be another person up on the device and it was like an assembly line, one after another, chop, chop, chop. During the French Revolution, anyone accused of supporting the aristocracy receives an appointment with the guillotine. In just one year alone, the guillotine removes 15,000 to 40,000 heads, earning this time period the name Reign of Terror. 
The unique part about the, the guillotine is that it takes only about two one hundredths of a second to actually decapitate, virtually instantaneous. So even though it cuts through all these tissues, the condemned really doesn't even know that it's happened. So the calculated speed of the blade falling through eight feet is 15 and a half miles an hour. That doesn't seem like it's really fast, but it actually all is going to happen within seven tenths of a second. Our acceleration here is constant. It is due to gravity because that's what's propelling this system. That multiplied by the weight is approximately 2,600 pounds of force. So basically you're going to have a force of 2,600 pounds rushing at you. To understand how the guillotine harnesses gravity and focuses its power on a single point, a life-size replica will undergo testing. And this is sort of a, um, a hybrid of two different uh, models that we looked at. Well, we sort of modernized the, uh, the release mechanism. We've made a pneumatic piston and we've tied a loop in the rope. So piston pulls back, releases the loop and the rope and the blade comes down. We worry about safety having anybody around it because this thing is lethal. Um, if you were to get your hand in there, cut your hand clean off. I mean, it can cut a person's head off and we're gonna cut this pig leg here. The density of its meat and bone will simulate the resistance of a human neck. So we're gonna do our guillotine demonstration and uh, I'm gonna give it a quick countdown and uh, down she comes. Three, two, one. During our experiment, uh, a couple things went wrong. The, uh, the pig's leg is wedged between the back of the blade and uh, the front of the lunette. The piece of ham didn't have enough mass sitting on the outside to keep the blade from deflecting outward. So as it hit, it wanted to deflect out, and by doing that, it deflected a lot of its energy outward. Because the guillotine ripped apart the pork leg, a different simulated neck material goes under the knife. We've replaced our pork leg with a ham loaf. Uh, we've placed a three-quarter inch dowel, wooden dowel, inside the loaf to uh, simulate the human spine. Three, two, one. This is actually showing me that back in the day, an executioner actually had to experiment a lot with their machine to dial it in and perfect it, and that was their craft. They would put slight improvements every single time they used it to make it better. The main fault that I think that was going on with this is that as the blade comes down, the blade is about four inches away from where it needs to sever. So we're not creating a pinch force. So we're gonna get more of a tear force to deflect the blade out. If the blade was more close in, it would act more like a scissors. And it would focus all that energy a little bit better in a slicing motion. After a few adjustments, the guillotine is ready to simulate another execution. Now we've uh, placed our foam dummy in the guillotine and we're gonna see if we can uh, just chop his head off. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Well, as you can see, it wasn't the cleanest of cuts. Foam absorbs impact. It gave us a huge area to try to absorb that impact and it's very hard to cut. So actually the dummy absorbed the amount of energy. So we ended up getting that tearing motion and almost cut through it, but it still tore it. The engineers suspect that each of the failed demonstrations lack the same thing. Body weight to help create the necessary pinch force. In addition to just strapping it down, we've uh, inserted a metal rod into the back of that uh, just to give it a little stability and then put some straps on the rod to hold that down. The whole point of this is to simulate some body mass there and give it a little leverage. Three, two, one. As the blade would come down, it has to be perpendicular to actually focus all that energy into what it's cutting. The people that would have to make the guillotine would have to make sure they took a lot of care into precision manufacturing of this actual machine. Also, they'd probably have to do a lot of maintenance as the parts would wear and tear, and any little mishap in this could stop the blade from coming down properly. While the French Revolution successfully creates a death machine that kills swiftly, the legacy of the guillotine is far from humane.
Assuming everything worked with the blade, that it came down correctly, your head would be sliced off in one clean blow. You would feel your head kind of tumbling towards the basket, but the sensation would almost be as...